Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Hardy Mohiden, and this is the show where we talk about all the major talking points in South African cricket. Now, we are going a little bit later with the show. We're going to go for an 8 o'clock, 8.30 time slot for our daily shows from now onwards. I think it's a smarter move to do it this time because obviously you guys will be coming from work as well, especially South Africans specifically will be coming still from, from work at six o'clock. So it makes it a bit difficult for you guys to be able to watch the show um, when it gets uploaded immediately. And I would like you guys to engage in the comment section when the videos are premiered. So for this particular show, I want to talk about what has happened, obviously, give you an update in the four-day series. It goes hand in hand with our daily rap that Abai has been writing. And that is on the website, of course, cricketfanaticsmag.com. So go check out our daily raps to keep up to date with that. But before we get going, don't forget to subscribe, click that notification bell for all future videos. So let's get into today's topic. So the headline for today's topic has to be, of course, Keegan Peterson and Cyril Iovia, who put on a 337-run partnership against the Lions. Um, we have Iovia that scored 199, unfortunately lost his wicket. Peterson scored 173, and that was also an amazing performance from him. Obviously, both now putting their hands up, you know, telling the selectors, look at me, I can play four-day cricket, I'm also up for grabs. This particular knock from Peterson, obviously newly appointed Dolphins number three, it really pushes him in that rank to be able to put his hand up for a national selection. We also got to see in that particular match a 3 for 37 from Maharaj, which is very important also for his form leading into the Sri Lankan series. We all know that Keshav Maharaj is the number one man on the team sheet when it comes to a spinner in the test arena, and he's really put up his hand. But so did George Linder early on in the week, who also bowled him phenomenally well, actually getting the first five of the series so far. With Marcus Ackerman scoring an unbeaten half century, that will really help him for his average. If you look at other some of the other games, we obviously had the match between the Knights and the Warriors. We had particularly Matthew Brieski standing out over there with a 71 not out. And we're hoping that he can go push on and score century. It's his time this season to really convert those half centuries into centuries. So I really hope that he can do it. And I'm sure all of you hope that he can do that too. We also had the likes of Miguel Pretorius taking three for 25, which is really awesome for the all-rounder who has now moved over to the Knights. And it's, it's really good to see that he can contribute over there too and be one of the main bowlers. We also had Nabe taking three for 22, and he's a new appointment at the Warriors. So it's really awesome to be able to see the new signings really doing well. Nabe, a very tricky bowler, especially in all formats. We go over to the Cobra side, and I got to witness, obviously, being live at the game, I got to witness Calvarena's impressive 85. Um, once again, Calvarena showing his ability to be able to hold an innings together and to be able to take the Cobras out of tricky situations. Obviously, batsmen falling around him. He really put on an amazing performance, showing what he has in his locker. I did an interview with Calvarena after the game, and you guys can go check those interviews out when I upload them after this show. So I'll be working hard to get them ready so that you guys can go have a look at them. They're in the exclusive interviews column. We also had the praise Shamsi, who took four for 79 in the match. Really tricky bowler, really hassling the Cobras throughout the series so far. So it's an awesome opportunity for him to be able to put up his hand again for the test arena. We know we got to see him, obviously, in the subcontinent, but we have to see whether Shamsi can really put up his hand for test selection. And, he, and, he, and he's been showing what he's capable of in the four-day arena. We then had, of course, Tienis De Brain, Dean Algar, obviously scoring off century. De Brain is still at the crease with 63, as well as Algar, who went out for 58 uh, Linda again in the wicket, taking two for 66, which was awesome. He also showed his um, ability a little bit for the with the bat before losing his wicket, which he really, I think the Cobras would have really liked him to push on and um, really hold that partnership with Calvary in the middle of it, unless it wasn't to be. Um, that match is obviously setting itself up nicely. 
Um, the match is kind of even at the moment. Uh, it can go either way, dependable on the weather tomorrow. Obviously, dependable on how the pitch will behave tomorrow. It can go either way. So that's my roundup, guys, for these games. Stay tuned as well, because I spoke to Aiden Markram, who scored 48. Ziad Abrams took his wicket. And it was a very important wicket for Ziad Abrams. Um, he really was fired up when he took it. He celebrated, and it was really awesome to see. I have a video with Ziad Abrams. He speaks about who that maiden wicket was for. So go check that video as well in the exclusive interviews section. It is uploaded right now, so you guys can go to have a look. But he took the wicket of Aiden Markram, which was a really amazing first wicket for him to take. Aiden Markram was looking really good for his 48, but lost his wicket to Ziad. And um, an awesome first wicket for Ziad to take. But I spoke to Aiden Markram about the four-day series, what his goals are for this for this campaign, what his goals are for the Proteas. I spoke to Aiden Markram about his form, about how he feels to be out in the middle, about his aspirations for the Proteas this season, as well as what he thinks about Dean Alga being test captain. Now, I wrote a column this afternoon about Dean Alga being captain. I also did an interview with Dean Alga yesterday. We spoke about wanting to be the next test captain. So go ahead and check that video out. But that's all I have for you today, folks. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, click the notification bell for all future videos. Go download our latest issue of the magazine. Zubair Hamza is on the cover. It's a new fresh start for South African cricket, and that is the theme. The link is on the screen. The link is in the description. Also, to all businesses out there that are looking to automate their sales process, build their relationships with their clients and leads on automation digitally, contact us. The link is in the description for you to get in touch with us and sign up for what we have to offer. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care.